Hi, my name is Niall and this render was created using both photogrammetry and procedural generation. In this video I will like to show you the workflow from start to finish. We will cover topics such as photogrammetry within the Curie engine, how to use Blender to prepare your 3D models for Unreal 5 and as an added bonus a quick overview of procedural generation to populate your own Unreal 5 environments. To start let's look at the Kiri engine the sponsor of today's video. The Kiri engine is a free mobile app that allows you to capture objects in the real world and convert them into 3D models. It is great for small and medium items but it is also fantastic for capturing foliage and large objects such as buildings. It is completely free to capture photos, upload and edit them within the Kiri mobile app. And from there, you can export a total of three models per week with a premium version being available, which grants more exports and access to the Kiri engine dashboard on the web. I use an iPhone to capture my model, but it works just as good, if not better on Android or with a drone. Here is how I added Kiri into my pipeline. Step one is to choose and capture your model. I traveled to a collector store and picked up a small airplane model, which I then photographed at every angle. As I lived beside a monastery, I ventured in to gather some scans of rocks and tree stumps, which I used for my foreground elements. Curie works really well in most lighting conditions. When capturing my model, I placed it on a cloth table in the center of my room and captured multiple layers. This meant after completing a single layer, I repeated the process at a lower angle and at a higher angle. Anywhere from 70 to 200 photos is a good range. With the photos taken, the next step is to jump into the Kiri web app to access your 3D model, which has just been generated based on the photos uploaded. From here, we can preview our model, select from a range of file formats, crop any unwanted objects, and adjust the materials if needed. When you are ready, you can export your model or apply the quad feature to optimize your polygons. From here, you can enable the PBR textures and adjust the mesh settings such as polygon count and the curve ratio. Of course, the lower your quad count, the lower the quality of your model will be and vice versa. This feature is perfect for game creators as you can easily create LODs if needed. With our model created, it is now time to move to the next step. Kiri has provided 90% of the work and all that is left is to add the final 10% within Blender. For that, I will adjust any polygons that I feel look off and model any added details that I feel would enhance my model. This includes the wheels, the propellers and the cannons. Let's select all of our objects, click File, Export and select FBX. Ensure selected objects only is selected and export your model. Our model has been created within the Kiri engine and cleaned within Blender. Now it is time to enter Unreal 5 and create our very own scene using the procedural generation tools in 5.2. The first thing to add is a PCG volume and then create a brand new PCG graph. From here we can create the blueprints to program our setup. I'll start by adding a surface sampler and connecting the landscape node. This node distributes points in a grid pattern in your world and to view those data points you need to enable the debug feature for that node. If you need to adjust the rotation and scale of your objects, you can use the transform point node and adjust your settings within. Well now you can create variation in the scale, the rotation and the transform. Next add a density filter. This will allow you to manipulate low and high density points. The lower bound and the higher bound manipulates your density. This is a great method when using foliage and trees. To add a little bit of randomness to your data points, you can use the density nose node. Last but not least, the static mesh spawner. This is where we will be adding 3D entries into your world. Simply add an entry and your mesh will appear in your viewport. This is a very basic setup for the PCG graph and I will be creating a more in-depth guide with more advanced techniques for the PCG volume, but for now, this is a good start. After a few hours of work, I ended up with this render. Not very good. Now this is the most important part. 
As always, don't be discouraged if you don't land on your ideal render first time around. Take a step back, get a snack, and get some feedback for your art. It goes a really long way. It's okay to be wrong sometimes. So I jumped back into Unreal and applied the feedback. Using the rule of thirds, I placed my photogrammetry model within the grids. Next, I added a mound underneath, which was created using mega scan assets. I really like the idea of vines being attached to the plane, suggesting that the landing was not very clean. So some ivy and dirt decals were applied to the model to suggest that it's been here for some time. The next step was to create a foreground that led the eye to the main model. So for that I turned to the photographer Source Studios for help. He suggested placing logs and tree stumps in the foreground at certain angles to help guide the eye into the centre of the frame. For the background I used the mega scans from the Electric Dreams project to quickly populate my background. And all that was left to do was lighting. Using the height fog I enabled the volumetric fog and dialed the extinction scale to 5. This is a dense forest after all, so this feature will help simulate the dense particles such as pollen that would be bouncing light within our environment. Using two large cubes I was able to funnel the directional light into the scene creating lovely god rays penetrating through the trees. All that was left to do was adjust my exposure and render my project. From here Affinity Photo was used for colour grading and I started by using level adjustments to manipulate the shadows and highlights. For me, my greens were a little too yellow, so I used a HSL slider to dial back the yellow and darken the greens within my render. Unfortunately, that also removed the color from my main model, so I duplicated the HSL tool, created a simple mask, and using a brush removed its effect on that particular part of my render. A very subtle curve adjustment was used to dampen the shadows and highlights. A lookup table was added with 40% opacity. And I also created these simple stars with a heavy blur effect to mimic light reflecting off the shinier parts of my model. All that was left to add were small details such as pollen and insects flying around the scene. I would like to thank the Kiri Engine for sponsoring today's video and I hope this workflow gets you experimenting with photogrammetry. If you would like to learn how to make snow environments, check this video out next.